All right, this one is kind of off the cuff today because I, I was thinking a lot about as interest rates start to increase here over the next little bit, and we're seeing inflation and all this craziness. What is it going to look like as prices start to come down? Now, who knows when exactly that's going to be, but real estate is cyclical. So what does it look like when we stop seeing the increases? Does it totally flatten out or do we see price declines? And I'm going to give you an example of what that could look like for you. Uh, right after I ask you to please subscribe to the channel, if you would like to stay up to date here in my marketplace of Surrey and the Fraser Valley for that matter, also to stay up to date in the province of British Columbia real estate as I try and cover the whole, well, I try and cover all of Canada as well. So hit subscribe if you're in those areas or if you're planning to move to those areas and I will try and keep you up to date as best I possibly can. And the best way for you to help me get this information out to other people just like you that are interested in my local marketplace here in Surrey is to click the like button. And I really appreciate every single like that I get. And if you dislike this video, just make sure to click that thumbs down button at least twice. Okay, so again, not uh, a thought out video here. I was just kind of considering when prices come down, how is it they come down and how much money will you lose, right? So let's let's think about it this way. In my marketplace, uh, a typical townhouse just a little while back for three bedrooms could have been, I don't know, let's call it $700,000. Okay, so three beds, uh, family, sounds like a, a lot of money, but it's a family style of home, a tandem style possible townhouse. 700 grand and you could uh, raise a family there it's not the white picket fence single family home but it, it's enough space 14 1500 square feet to raise uh, your two kids and and have your spouse around or whatever all right so let's say that's seven hundred thousand dollars well because over the last many years since 2016 now uh, there has been more buyers in the market than sellers those prices have been driven up and for a myriad of reasons uh you, you've got obviously low rates um people wanting more space due to the pandemic all these different reasons but you've got let's say 10 buyers for every one listing that comes on so every listing that comes on the next one sells for more because all those buyers are competing in order to get into that property so prices go up and up and up currently in my marketplace right now that same home could be let's call it 900,000 bucks. Probably, I think the last one I saw was like 930. But let's use $900,000. So you bought for 700 a couple years ago, you're now ready to make the next step or you got a job somewhere else. And now you want to sell for $900,000. So you put your property on the market for 899 or 900. And you sell for that price, but you sold with let's say 10 offers. So there are nine more buyers still in the marketplace looking for your type of property. And uh, let's face it, there's probably new buyers also coming to the market as well. So your neighbor, a couple doors down, uh, Bill or Jim or whoever you want it to be, he puts his house on the market a couple of months later and those buyers are likely still in the marketplace because again, there's not that many homes for sale. So now let's say there's another 10 buyers, uh, many of them might be the same one, come and offer on his property, except he, he this time listed for nine and a quarter and maybe he sells for 930 or 940 right so you can see this is this is kind of the steps that we've been taking and what has got us to these crazy high prices but as interest rates creep up the listings will still keep coming on at those higher and higher prices so let's say for instance uh interest rates increase tomorrow and uh, now we've got another neighbor a couple doors down from there. And because the last guy sold for, I don't know, let's say again, 930, 940, he wants 950, right? Which is human nature. Everybody always wants more. And maybe because interest rates are increasing, uh, he actually gets 950 or 945 even, right? So they, again, prices are still creeping up. But when interest rates increase and more and houses get more expensive, uh, not only as the price, but also as the actual uh, cost of lending. So, so there's the price that you're paying for the home, but there's also the price that you're buying in a monthly payment. When they both go up too high, some buyers start disqualifying themselves, which is the purpose of increasing interest rates, right? So let's say that guy sells now for 945. 
The next guy, do you think he's going to want to come on the market at 945? No, he's not. What he's going to do is he's probably going to come on the market at 959 or 969 or whatever, because that's what sellers do. They Sellers almost always want more than the last sale. I don't know what it is. It's human nature. They don't really care to look at what the market is doing. They're much more inclined to only look about, well, this is how much he got, so I should get more, right? I some sort of psychology there. Okay, so now we've got Mr. 959 and interest rates increased. So less of those buyers are interested or even able to purchase that home because their payments have gone up. Right, so we've gone from 10 buyers on the market, maybe at $900,000 when you sold and you were happy, to one or two, or even worse than that. How about no buyers? So that guy at 959 doesn't sell. And that property now sits on the market. So he either hopes that there's somebody desperate that comes in, or uh, he's just going to sit on the market and expire. So as interest rates increase, if that price comes back down to maybe where the last sale is, now a buyer will see value because the buyer, remember for prices to come down, there has to be more listings than buyers, right? The, the equation has to reverse. So right now we're 10 to one buyers to listings, or let's call it 20 to one buyers versus listings. In order for property values to come down, you have to have at least uh, you have to have at least, at least I'm going to say two to one, uh, listings to buyers, right? So you have to have at least double the inventory that way, uh, a buyer, if they have two properties to pick from instead of one property or competing on one property, they can pick, and now they'll pick the one that would give them, them the best deal, right? So as we go to 959, if the buyers say topped out in their price range at nine. 45 for the last sale plus interest rates increased now they can't afford that 959 so until that guy comes down to 949 which is now a price reduction right everybody's going to think prices are coming down but it's only a price reduction in the list maybe he will still sell at 945 but if interest rates creep up again right like we we see money get even more expensive or maybe the fed is going to do a half point next time uh, there is something to consider there because now those buyers, they, they either don't qualify for as much, I think the stress test is still going to save us, but, or they're just self uh, disqualifying themselves because of cost, right? So now they're looking at 929 or, or maybe 900 again, right? They're starting to look at the lower prices because they can't afford those now higher prices. So if that guy that's now reduced his price 10 grand in his mind, he's losing money. Okay, he's not losing money because he's still higher than the highest sale, but in his mind, he's losing money. And even if you're the guy, let's say, remember, you bought for 700,000, even if you're that guy and now you have to sell for 900 because your neighbor sold at one point for 945, you are in your own mind again losing money, right? It, you're not because you never had that money in the first place because you didn't sell at the peak of the market. However, uh, in their mind, they are. So this is where prices are coming off. Now, let's say interest rates go up, everything goes crazy, and these properties now reduce from 959, which they never were in the first place. And the new purchase price or the new selling price for this is 875. Well, this is where people are going, I'm losing, losing 5%, right? Prices came down 5%. I guess in a way uh, they have come off and maybe they've come down 5%, but they definitely haven't come down 10%, even though in the mindset of the owner, they could be selling for as much as 85 or $90,000 less than what they thought they should sell for when the market was, was higher, right? So what you need in order for this to actually happen is you need more listings than buyers. And currently, like I said, it's 10 buyers at least for every one listing. That's why prices are going up so quickly. As soon as we get to a spot where there's two listings or three listings for every single buyer, prices will at least flatten out, if not come down. And the only way to get there is to make the money more expensive, right? Increase interest rates so that will take away demand. No matter what anybody else says, there is no other thing that is going to change this market. And I guarantee you all this talk about we need to build more and build faster. All of that will go away completely 
if we have 4.5% interest rates. Just will. 100% guarantee it. Because that's the market that we lived in in 2013, right? When we had 35 4% interest rates, there were, that was actually them paying uh, the, that was the, the amount, not the stress tests, but that was the amount they were paying at the time as the client, there was no problem. It, at some point it was actually declining prices in that price range. And, uh, there was more houses or townhouses or condos than, I mean, they were sitting vacant, right? There was just tons of them available and it was because money was more expensive. So that's what I think the actual decline in prices will look like. Now, why would we see a massive decline? We're talking more than 20%. If we see massive interest rate increases, like if at one point in time, uh, the government was silly enough to do an entire uh, 1% increase at one time, you're going to see that money come off. You're going to see 20%. I think if you see a full percent and qualification jumps up to, I don't know, let's say uh, five and a half, six and a half, I guess that would put us at, at, at six and a quarter percent qualification, yes, you're going to see people afford a lot less listings will come flooding back to the market, there will be way less buyers than listings. And this conversation uh, about a listing shortage will stop completely. Uh, next video, I promise will be a lot more thought out than this one. But I just wanted to kind of get that rant out of the way because there's, there's uh, people saying, you know, market's going to crash market's going to go on forever. Uh, the market is cyclical. Keep that in mind. There will be highs. There will be lows. You have to keep those things in mind. Your best possible position when you're getting in or out of the market or specifically into the market is to make sure you can be in that home and carry that property in order to get you out of any downturn. So try not to get yourself into a spot where maybe you're getting into a one bedroom and you're having twins, right? Like that wouldn't be a very good spot because you may have to sell at the bottom in order to, to get out. Anyway, uh, again, hit that like button. Make sure you check out another video while you're here on the channel. If you have any questions about the market or you need help getting in or out of this market, book a call with me right down below in the description right now, and we'll see you in a couple of days.